in a world where printers are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, Sovol decided to make a small printer. Let's go. So this is the Sovol Zero. The backstory, I suppose if you don't know it, the Sovol SV08 was released about a year ago. Time flies. And it was based loosely, not that loosely actually, on the design of the Voron 2.4 printer, which I guess you could call the classic Voron. Anyway, fast forward a couple of Sovol bed slingers later and we have this, the next logical step in making a production equivalent of a Voron printer, the Savoloron Zero. Do not let the light blue colour of this printer fool you into thinking it's not an absolute beast. This printer is currently the fastest production printer out there, at least in theory. I know a lot of you out there are champing at the bit to tell me that the printer with a bed this size won't ever reach the maximum quoted speed, so... <clears throat> Turns out you can model this, at least simplistically, and by that I mean ignoring any second derivative of velocity. If you want to work out the speed the tool head has achieved for any given distance, you can use a formula. If we plot this with distance against speed, which is something that you're probably not expecting to see, we normally see time on the x-axis, which is why it's confusing and why it's curved when it shouldn't be. Don't want to get into that, but you can see how much of a distance of the bed if you start at one side that you can be going at before you hit top speed and how long you can go at top speed along the bed for each acceleration value and maximum speed value. You can see that most modern acceleration values, 20k, 40k, 10k, they all allow the tool head to hit maximum speed for most of the travel. Obviously, yes, jerk exists. I can't be bothered modeling that. That makes the whole conversation a lot more complicated, but you get the general idea. Interestingly, that viewpoint that you can't hit top speed, it's might have been valid in 2018 on the Ender 3, although the Ender 3 had a maximum speed of about 100 millimeters per second, really realistically about 80 millimeters per second on stock Marlin. So again, it wasn't actually that relevant then either. It's almost as if it's never been more than just a casual retort that you just throw at someone without actually doing the math and working it out. Imagine that. Anyway, it is more complicated than that, so don't take these graphs as fact and don't put them on Reddit because they'll, they'll rip it apart. There obviously isn't instantaneous acceleration is the point. I did a video on this once and I still got it wrong because printers don't do classical jerk in the way that you think they do. Moving on, the Sovol Zero can do a benchy in just over eight and a half minutes. Not the neatest benchy in the world, but come on, eight and a half minutes. In terms of hardware, you have a huge rear blower for this size of machine. You have tiny rails on all axes, even Z, and Z has two rails and two Z screws. Taking off the base reveals that those are timing belted together, which is superior to unbelted on one driver as long as they are only on one driver, because they can't fall out of sync, whereas if they were two steppers on one driver and not belted together, they, they could, when the power's off, fall out of sync. Obviously, what this doesn't allow is gantry-based levelling, but that is really no big deal on this size of bed. There's a spring tensioner on this belt too, which is locked out by screwing it down and unless you're actually adjusting it, which is the better way to do it. Looking at the back of the printer, and before we do that, I want to point out that the panels on the side and back, they are actually steel and not plastic. A lot of printers use plastic for the sides. This means that just like the Core 1, you can do all the magnetic mods you want. I don't think there's any other benefits to having steel panels on the side other than it's magnetic and so you can stick things to it. 
fish or otherwise. Inside the rear there's evidence of a mains powered bed which is an odd choice for this size of machine but I guess it explains the really small power supply we just saw a moment ago. I must say I'm slightly disappointed on the board here to see that Sovol didn't decide to use the available 48 volts input for the steppers. This would make them slightly more dangerous if you put your hand in there so maybe that's why. But it, it does open up the possibility to do a low hanging mod as an end user on this printer to get it to go at even more ludicrous numbers. You'll probably get more acceleration out of it by quite, quite a margin. I don't doubt some of you are going to try this. If you do, if you do run your steppers at 48 volts, first of all, don't blame me if it blows up. Second of all, let me know. I want to see it. It would be remiss of me not to mention this. I think eddy probes are great and it can mesh the whole bed in a couple of seconds but really on a 150mm bed it seems like a vanity thing more than anything else. It also uses pressure based calibration it seems to use to calibrate the Z offset so you don't need to manually set the Z offset as evidenced by the particularly good first layer on this printer which is really nice to see. One of the main challenges Sovol told me they were having during development of the printer was stopping it from jumping around so much on tables. I see that the solution to this has turned out to be pretty simple, and that is these rather unassuming feet. They're just basic silicone rubber, but they're huge and they do seem to work. So sometimes the simple solution is the solution. We could take off the front of the tool head. This is clipped on and held on by magnets. I don't know why. Maybe magnets weren't doing it alone at these accelerations. It seems to me like the obvious solution would be to use more magnets but they didn't there's a tool head board behind it and behind that there's the extruder which looks an awful lot like an orbiter to me or some version of it this is good news because this type of extruder is really quite highly regarded it should also be able to do flexibles pretty easily with this design and when i tested it it did fine out of the box even with the filament fed through the tubes so there doesn't appear to be any problem whatsoever with tpu at least at the default speeds So it turns out that printers' prices are not directly proportional to bed size. It would be funny if they were. The thing is that printers of the same spec but different size, they all need a lot of the same components irregardless of the size. I don't want to do any more maths, but you get the idea that a small printer with the same features as a large one will cost probably almost the same amount, with savings only on a, a bit of material and probably quite a lot of shipping. The Sovol SV0 is 399 on early bird, which I'm not sure if I'll get this review out in time for that or not. I think 450 give or take as normal price, somewhere between 450 and 499, depending on things. I suggest checking the links out below if you want to see the exact price as of the time that you see this. That may or may not seem like a good price depending on whether you're judging by bed size as an indicator of price, as I already said, as opposed to looking at the overall package. The SV0, as far as I'm concerned, it hits a good price point for people who've been eyeing up, say, a Voron Zero, but either don't want to build it, or they don't want to constantly have to strip it down way too far to fix it. I'm not saying that's why I don't use my Voron Zero currently, but it might be. I haven't recently priced up a kit for any spec of Voron Zero, but this spec is not base, or at least it wasn't when I built mine. And those base kits, I seem to recall they run from about $400 up, 
plus shipping for the cheap ones. So obviously when you add all this other stuff like the curtain fans, the eddy sensors, the increased flow rate, I think that's why my argument stands that this would deliver better value than it may initially seem if you compare it to say an SV08. Ultimately who this printer's for is probably people who either don't want a large footprint printer, they don't have room for it, or they already have a larger footprint printer and they just want a smaller one to go with it. And I think in some ways it's really hard to know what the demand is going to be like for this size of printer because I don't think there's that many 150 by 150s out there, certainly not of this kind of class of printer and of this kind of price of printer. The Soval tribute to the Voron Zero also seems like it's going to be easier to repair in most cases based on just a hunch really, looking around it, as long as you can still get the parts, and Sovol are usually quite good at sharing the files to print parts too. And of course I should mention that Sovol are one of the better manufacturers for supporting and respecting open source and the open source community, so they're a reasonable bet for repairability and obviously from the firmware perspective as well, because this printer runs Clipper and it's it's open from the start, you've got the root password. Of course, at the end of the day, you have to bear in mind that everyone's motivation for getting or building a printer is different. So some people will prefer to build a printer from a kit. Um, I did that and I enjoyed it. I quite fancy doing it again at some point. Some will prefer to buy a printer. Some will do both. I think quite a lot of people do both because the printer they build is usually the project printer and then they want a production printer that, that's always working. And some people will buy a printer like this and spend more money modding it than they would have on building it from scratch. You, you know who you are. Let me know what you think in the comments. I will see you next time with probably the other interesting printer out there right now with a budget price tag, which is the Centauri Carbon. Thank you for watching.